This is a really nice little feeder that we have. Unfortunately, there's no top on it protecting it from rain. And it rained here for six days before it snowed last night. You can see how nasty this is. And after six days, a lot of those seeds were sprouting. It gets clogged up. The only thing you can do is take a hose and spray everything you can out of here and try to wash it up. Let it dry out sufficiently and put it up again. Another thing you need to think about when you plant your uh, permanent pipe in the ground for a feeding station for birds is you don't want to put it in your garden beds where you have flowers and bulbs and everything because these seeds do come up as weed seeds and if you have it in the yard right there you can weed whack around it and ride a lawnmower or push a lawnmower around it and cut it off and keep it from growing. And another thing under a feeder like that uh, you'll see the grass die because of all the nitrogen because they go to the bathroom while they're eating and all that nitrogen in the soil and that circle around that feeder will be bare next year because of all the extra nitrogen. I'll try to hold this camera steady here. You can see a downy woodpecker up on a suet cake and a bunch of sparrows. There's been a woodpecker fooling with the peanut feeder and I was hoping he'd come back. If you, We have a lot of cardinals in the yard. They love black sunflower seeds and uh, it's our state bird along with about seven other states I believe. And uh, if you like mocking birds all you have to do is take about a tablespoon of uh, peanut butter. We prefer to put out the nutty peanut crunchy type peanut butter and I don't know what it is but I can put that out and a mocking bird will be in this yard within 10 minutes eating it. They do love peanut butter. A lot of things love peanut butter. If you want to train a squirrel to take peanuts out your hand, just uh, split the shell open on a peanut to where you've got a half of it looks like a little two-seat boat and fill it up with a nut, nutty type peanut butter and put it out for him and let him eat that a few days and then hold him one. Now I did it on my little gazebo right there. It's got lattice and I stuck it through the lattice and over the weeks, you know, I was out there like every morning being a retired person in the warm weather. Uh, and I would hold it through the lattice and he finally got up there and took it. After a while, which took maybe about three or four weeks, he was sitting on my arm eating peanuts as I handed them to him. And if you want a bird to eat out of your hand, the easiest one to get to do that is a black-headed chickadee. He's got a black top on his head. And he will be, that and a woodpecker will be the last one to leave that feeding station. A chickadee will stay on that feeding station. I can get within two feet of it. He might just walk around to the other side of the feeder and keep feeding. And once I touch the, one of the feeders, he'll take off. And that's all there is today, folks. That's a thresher in the yard. When my children are 48 and 42 years old, and when they were, you know, like 10 and years old and younger, a thresher built a nest in a camellia tree bush right outside this bay window. And uh, they hatched out that year, and the mother only had one leg. And she raised her brood, and, and they fledged, and we have had them in the yard ever since. If, if a bird raises the young in your yard, you will have them in there for years. And the last bird to come to a feeder, late at night, when you can barely see them from here, will be a cardinal. They're usually the last bird to come to a feeder. When you place a bird feeding station in your yard, you need to pay attention to the surrounding bushes, railings, posts. A uh, squirrel can jump, I forget what the deal is, but I think they can jump probably five feet high. Uh, if you keep this at least 10 or 12 feet uh, from any overhanging branches or post, like we have a post over there right there on our grapevine, uh, if that post right there was where this one was, it would be far enough away from that post that it couldn't jump to it. Now if that post was taller, it can jump to it and as it descends, it would get onto a feeder like that. But you have to watch where your 
You can't put it next to a bush or a tree, anything, they'll get up there. And occasionally you will get a, maybe a big old super uh, squirrel that can wrap his arms around that and shinny up the pole. I spray silicone on it when they, they do that. And uh, I don't do it near the bottom, I do it to where they jump to. And it's really comical to watch them jump, holding on with all they can as they slide back down to the ground. But uh, one, if they get really dirty, they can sort of grip it a little bit better. But most of the time, it'll keep the squirrels off of it. We haven't had one go up it this year. But that's what I know about feeding the birds.